number 12. Nickel Plate Road, number 587. Starting off the third part of my list at the number 12 spot is old number 587, a USRA 2A2 light Mikado from the New York, Chicago and St. Louis Railroad, otherwise more commonly known as the Nickel Plate Road. The United States Railroad Administration, or just simply the USRA for short, was established on December 28, 1917 to basically nationalize America's railroads as the US made its entry into the First World War, lasting even after about two years after the war ended, until March 1, 1920. During its brief two-year existence, the USRA introduced their own standardized locomotives and rolling stock, built for use on just about every railroad in the country. In fact, even after the USRA had ended in 1920, many railroads actually duplicated their designs. You could say that these locomotives were somewhat the American equivalent of the BR standards designed by Robert Riddles and built for British Railways between 1951 and 1960. The USRA had come up with a total of 12 standard locomotive designs, which included their 060 and 080 switchers, their 2662 and 2882 Malay compound articulateds, and their light and heavy variants of their 282 Mikados, 2102 Santa Fe's, 462 Pacifics, and 482 Mountains. The USRA even distributed the American-built Class YE-210 decapods, otherwise best known as the Russian decapods, which were originally built for export out to Russia. However, 200 of them were left stranded here in the United States due to the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917, so they were then modified for use on American railroads. A total of 1,851 USRA standards were built, with a further 3,251 copies built after the USRA was dissolved in 1920, resulting in a grand total of 5,102 locomotives built between 1918 and 1953. Today, there are 21 USRA design locomotives in preservation, including both USRA originals and copies made by other railroads. However, out of the 12 USRA designs, unfortunately, four didn't manage to make it into preservation, those being their heavy 2A2 Mikados and 2102 Santa Fe's, and both their light and heavy 4A2 Mountains. The most widely built of the USRA standards were their 2A2 light Mikados, their standard light freight locomotives, with 625 and a further 641 copies after the USRA was dissolved, built between 1918 and 1929 by Baldwin, Alco, and Lima, resulting in a total of 1,266. Even in preservation, the Lime Mikados are still the most numerous USRA locomotives today, with nine originals and copies preserved, one of them, of course, being the 587. Number 587 was built by Baldwin Locomotive Works in September 1918, originally for the Lake Erie and Western Railroad as number 5541, until that railroad was bought out by the Nickel Plate Road in 1922. Then the locomotive was renumbered to the 587 two years later in 1924. The 587 served the Nickel Plate Road for 33 years, pulling freight trains between Indianapolis and Michigan City. The Lime Mikado remained relatively unchanged from its original design throughout its career on the nickel plate, other than being given a new larger tender that could hold more coal and water sometime during the 1930s, as well as having its cylinders replaced with a new set made by Lima during an overhaul the engine had in 1943. The 587 pulled its last revenue freight train in March 1955, then shortly after was retired from regular service. The locomotive was then donated to the city of Indianapolis six months later, in September of that year, then placed on static display in the city's Broad Ripple Park. Interesting fact, before being placed on display, the 587 had its original tender swapped with that of fellow nickel plate 2A2 Mikado number 639, as its tender needed repairs and the 587's tender was in excellent condition. Also just to add, the 639 is still around today too, on static display at Miller Park in downtown Bloomington, Illinois. Number 587 remained on static display in Broad Ripper Park for almost 30 years, until the city decided to have a new public library built in the park, but the only location available was the same spot where the 587 sat on display. 
Around that time, a group known as the Friends of the 587 did a feasibility test on the locomotive, and soon determined it was in good enough condition to be restored to steam. So the Indianapolis Parks Department had the engine leased to the Indiana Transportation Museum. The 587 was then moved from the park to a leased work area at the Amtrak shops in Beech Grove, Indiana. Restoration for the locomotive took about five years to complete, taking up thousands of volunteer hours as well as costing nearly $250,000 in donated money and materials. But all of that eventually paid off in the end when the 587 returned to steam on September 17, 1988 and hauled its first excursion between Indianapolis and Logansport, Indiana. Since then, the 587 was operated by the Indiana Transportation Museum, which considered the USRA Live Mikado their crown jewel. One of the 587's more regular work was hauling the museum's fare train from Fishers, Indiana to Indianapolis for the Indiana State Fair, as well as other special events. Old number 587 has also had its fair share of mainline running as well. Between the 17th and 20th of June in 1989, it double-headed with Norfolk and Western No. 611 to pull the annual Independence Limited between Rocky River, Ohio and Roanoke, Virginia, the 587 joining the consist in Bellevue, Ohio. Then about a month later, on July 16th of that year, the USRA locomotive joined the 611 and Class A No. 1218 on a triple header from Roanoke to Lynchburg, Virginia for the National Railroad Historical Society Convention in Asheville, North Carolina. The 587 also pulled a couple more excursions for the convention, even double heading with the 1218 for one of them. In 1993, the 587 ran a couple of double-header excursions along with a fellow nickel plate road locomotive, that being 284 Berkshire No. 765. The first excursion was between Fort Wayne, Indiana and Chicago, Illinois, and the second one was part of the NRHS convention for that year. In the year 2000, No. 587 even became the star of her very own movie, that being the family film Old No. 587, The Great Train Robbery. The movie was centered around a group of kids who team up with a veteran railroad engineer to save the 587 from scrap by driving the locomotive from the scrapyard where it sat to a museum for preservation. In November 2002, with the 587's mandatory Federal Railroad Administration rebuild approaching, the engine made its final runs at the Indiana Transportation Museum, including an all-day excursion over the museum's complete 38-mile main line between Indianapolis and Timpton, Indiana. In early 2003, the 587 was taken out of service after its operating permit finally expired for its FRA-mandated 15-year rebuild. However, things wouldn't go as smoothly for the engine's second restoration. Work on the locomotive has been slow going due to very little funding, taking up to the better part of 15 years. During that time, in 2008, ownership of the 587 had been officially transferred from the Indiana Parks Department to the Indiana Transportation Museum. Things didn't get any better for the 587 come 2018. In late June of that year, the Indiana Transportation Museum had received a court order to vacate their former location. However, around that same time, the Kentucky Steam Heritage Corporation had struck a deal with the museum to move the 587 before the deadline. Plans were to have the 587 moved to Ravenna, Kentucky and stored alongside Chesapeake and Ohio No. 2716 until the museum had raised enough funds for the engine's restoration. By July 14th of that same year, all of the components for the locomotive and its tender had been moved from the museum to Ravenna. In March 2021, ownership of the 587 was transferred from the museum to a private individual who was working alongside the KSHC regarding the future of the locomotive. As of today, the 587 still resides at Ravenna, Kentucky and is to remain there until a solid plan for the engine is in place. Number 11 Canadian National Number 3254 Another 282 Mikado, this time being number 3254, one of the Class S1B Mikados from the Canadian National Railway, built in 1917 by the Canadian Locomotive Company. The engine actually first started off as the Canadian Government Railway number 2854 back when it was first built, until becoming number 3254 about one year later when the CGR merged with the Canadian Northern Railway, thus forming the Canadian National. 
The 3254 mostly saw work pulling freight trains over the next 40 years. However, it wasn't exactly smooth sailing the whole way. In 1941, number 3254 was involved in the head-on collision with Great Northern Railway H5 Class 462 Pacific number 1351 at North Road Cut near Burnaby, British Columbia. As a result, the 3254's frame horns were badly bent, resulting in the frame itself being built to one side, causing its cap to be off-centered. However, despite the amount of damage the engine received, including its bent frame, Canadian National didn't have the locomotive fully repaired properly before putting it back into service. This poor decision would eventually come back to haunt the engine decades later. Anyway, the 3254 continued in freight service for Canadian National until being retired from regular service in 1958. The former Canadian National Mikado spent the next three years in storage until it was sold in November 1961 to motel owner Willis F. Barron. Barron then had the locomotive moved to Ashland, Pennsylvania, where he planned to operate it on the old Reading Railroad branch line that served the town. Unfortunately, the tracks in the town had been ripped up before his plan came to fruition, so instead, he had the engine disassembled and transported by truck to his Ashland Court Motel, where it was reassembled for stack display. Barron eventually lost interest in returning the 3254 to steam sometime in the 1970s, so he sold the 282 Mikado to the Adirondack Railroad in Lake Placid, New York. However, the locomotive never got delivered there. The engine was then sold again in 1982 to the Gettysburg Railroad, where it was disassembled again and shipped out to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. There, the engine was once again reassembled, then restored to steam in 1985, then it began pulling excursion trains between Gettysburg and Mount Holly Springs, Pennsylvania. However, the 3254 was found to be a bit too big and heavy for the railroad, but nonetheless, it continued to operate for the Gettysburg over the next two years. Interesting fact, during its time on the Gettysburg Railroad, the 3254 was given an out-of-tune Canadian National five-chime step-top whistle, which resulted in it sounding a little something like this. Sound a bit familiar? Well, in addition to those, the whistle also gave off this particular sound. That's right, this is the same train whistle sound that's been used in countless movies, TV shows, cartoons, video games, and other forms of media over the years, as well as a few other whistle sounds that also came from this engine around the time it carried this whistle. In 1987, the 3254 was traded over at the Steamtown National Historic Site in Scranton, Pennsylvania, as they were in need of a larger and more powerful locomotive to meet the demands for better motive power in order to pull longer and heavier excursion trains. This was done in exchange for $100,000, as well as former Canadian Pacific Railway 462 Pacific number 1278. And I think we all know the story of what happened to the 1278 during its time on the Gettysburg by now. Upon arriving at Steamtown, the 3254 was cosmetically modified and masqueraded as Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western number 1271. It's also worth noting that Steamtown already had another Canadian National 282 Mikado at that time, Class S1D number 3377, which became a parts donor for the 3254 over the years. This even included its tender in 2010, when the 3254's original tender was scrapped due to rust leaks. In 1995, number 3254 took part in the grand opening of Steamtown's main roundhouse alongside a few other locomotives. These included Steamtown's resident Canadian Pacific 462 Pacific number 2317, Baldwin Locomotive Works 060 Switcher number 26, and three other visiting engines, Reading Blue Mountain and Northern 462 Pacific number 425, Susquehanna China Built SY 282 Mikado number 142, and Milwaukee Road 484 Northern number 261. Number 3254 continued to operate on excursion trains at Steamtown over the next 17 years. However, the former CN Mikado's operating career at Steamtown would eventually take a sour turn. <laughs> 
After making its last run on December 2, 2012, the locomotive was taken out of service at the end of the holiday season. It was originally intended to go through its 1,472-day inspection and a rebuild back to operational condition. However, Steamtown instead decided to officially retire the 3254 from excursion service as it was found to be in pretty poor condition. This was not only due to that bent frame Canadian National neglected to properly repair after its accident in 1941, which caused the locomotive to become a rough rider, but it was also found to consume a staggering amount of coal, especially when compared to the fuel consumption of Canadian Pacific No. 2317 which also operated at Steamtown until being taken out of service in 2010. As of today, the 3254 still remains on stack display at Steamtown, with no plans to have it return to steam anytime soon, due to its poor condition and, especially, its bent frame. Because of this, it was decided that Boston and Maine 462 Pacific number 3713 would become the 3254's replacement once restoration for that engine is complete. And just to add as an additional fact, back in 2018, Steamtown had stated that the aforementioned number 3377 will be the next possible candidate for restoration back to Steam after the restoration for the 3713 was completed. Number 10 Cotton Belt Route Number 819 Next on the list is 484 Northern No. 819 from the St. Louis Southwestern Railway, or more commonly known as the Cotton Belt Route, or just simply the Cotton Belt. No. 819 is one of 20 484 Northerns built for the Cotton Belt, with the first 10 built by Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1930, and the remaining 10 by the Cotton Belt themselves in their shops in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, with the first 5 built in 1937, and the remaining 5 in 1942. In fact, the A-19 is actually the final 484 Northern to be built for the Cotton Belt in 1942, then put into service one year later in 1943. Like the rest of its fellow Cotton Belt Northerns, No. 819 spent its working life in freight service, especially on the railroad's Blue Street merchandise trains. The A-19 operated on the Cotton Belt for about 10 and a half years, having racked up more than 804,000 miles until it was forced into retirement as more modern diesel locomotives were put into service. In July 1955, the railroad's president, H.J. McKenzie, had the locomotive presented to the city where it was born, Pine Bluff, where it was then put on stag display in Townsend Park until it was then moved to Oakland Park in 1960. However, the A-19's time on display in the park weren't too kind, as the large locomotive fell victim to the elements and vandalism. After spending nearly 30 years on outdoor display, the former Con Bill 484 looked like a shell of its former self. However, in December 1983, the Con Bell Rail Historical Society and the Con Bell teamed up to move the 819 to the very place where the engine was first built 40 years earlier for restoration the Pine Bluff Shops. After about three years and costing about $140,000, on April 6, 1986, the large Con Bell 484 Northern was steamed up for the first time in 33 years. A large crowd had gathered outside the Pine Bluff Shops and burst into applause when they saw the engine move under her own power out of the shop building. 20 days later, on April 26, the A-19 pulled its first excursion train between Pine Bluff and Fordyce, Arkansas. In just one year, the A-19 saw quite a bit of activity, including pulling a special excursion to Little Rock, Arkansas to celebrate the state's sesquicentennial, and even playing a short role in the 1987 film End of the Line. The large Cotton Belt Northern Type continued to operate in excursion service over the next seven years, including traveling out to St. Louis, Missouri in 1990 to take part in that year's National Railway Historical Society Convention, joining alongside Union Pacific 484 Northern No. 844, St. Louis and San Francisco, or Frisco, 482 Mountain No. 1522, and Norfolk and Western Class A 2664 No. 1218. The 819 ran its last excursion to Tyler, Texas and back in October 1993. Then after being fired up for the last time in 1994, the large Conbell Northern was taken out of service.
to this day, the A-19 still remains in storage at the Pine Bluff Shops, which is now part of the Arkansas Railroad Museum. Restoration for the locomotive is still happening, albeit at a pretty slow pace. Back in March 2021, the Arkansas State Legislature had passed an act that designated the 819 as the official state locomotive of Arkansas in hopes of encouraging future funds for better protection for the locomotive, as well as its ongoing restoration. Number 9 Pennsylvania Railroad Numbers 1223 and 7002 now we come to two early 20th century built old time locomotives from the Pennsylvania Railroad, D16 SB 440 American number 1223 and E7 442 Atlantic number 7002. We'll start with number 1223, the sole survivor of the Pennsylvania D16 SB class 440 Americans. In fact, the sole surviving Pennsy 440 American in general. The D-16s were the final class of 440 Americans to be built for the Pennsylvania Railroad, with a total of 426 built at the railroad's Juniata shops in Altoona, Pennsylvania between 1895 and 1910, separated into five subclasses. Number 1223 was built in 1905, originally as a high-speed passenger engine with larger driving wheels. However, around the time the engine was built, the 440 American type was already becoming outdated, being superseded by larger and more powerful locomotives with more driving wheels. Number 1223 would eventually be rebuilt with smaller driving wheels for use on freight trains, having been replaced on passenger service by such locomotives as the Penzi's Class A6 442 Atlantics and their ever iconic K4 462 Pacifics. It was also a bit modernized as well, being fitted with superheaters, hence the S in its classification, piston valves, an electric headlight, as well as other improvements. By the 1930s, while other railroads had already completely replaced the 440 American type, the Pennsylvania, as well as Boston and Maine and Canadian Pacific, still kept their 440s in service. At one point, the 1223 was one of three Pennsy 440s to be leased to the Baltimore, Chesapeake and Ohio Railway, where it worked on such lines as the McDaniel Branch and the line between Love Point and Easton. The 1223 was later scheduled to be scrapped after its time on the BC&A. However, the old Pensy 440 ended up being saved when it was noticed by a Pennsylvania Railroad official, who ordered the locomotive to be restored as close to its original condition as possible in 1937. Since then, the 1223 was put on display at several railroad fairs during the late 1930s and 50s. For much of that time when it wasn't on display, the engine was kept in storage at the Roundhouse in Northumberland, Pennsylvania. The 1223 eventually made its way into preservation, when in 1965, it was leased to the Strasburg Railroad in Strasburg, Pennsylvania, where it was restored back to operational condition on August 14th of that year. After that, the PRR 440 pulled the railroad's tourist trains between Strasburg and Paradise, Pennsylvania. By the 1970s and 80s, the locomotive was used quite often on the railroad's regular tourist trains. This also included pulling the railroad's annual Santa Claus Special at Lancaster, Pennsylvania between 1965 and 1968. In 1979, the 1223 was added to the National Register of Historical Places as Passenger Locomotive Number 1223 by the United States Department of the Interior. Number 1223 has even become a bit of a movie star, having starred in two different movies. First being the 1941 Hal Roach comedy, Broadway Limited, alongside the, now extinct, Pennsylvania streamlined K4 Pacific number 3768, and second and last being the 1969 film adaptation of the Broadway musical Hello, Dolly, where it was dressed up as though it was from the New York Central and Hudson River Railroad. We're going to leave the 1223 for now and start talking about the second locomotive in this spot, the Pennsylvania Railroad Class E7 442 Atlantic Number 7002. Number 7002 was, again, built by the Penzi's Altoona Works in Altoona, Pennsylvania in August 1902 as part of the Class E2 and E3 442 Atlantics built between 1902 and 1910 which were then rebuilt into the Class E7s between 1916 and 1920. Interesting fact, the 7002 here is not the original number 7002, 
When it was first built in 1902, it was originally Class E2, number 8063. The actual number 7002 was a Class E2, uh, wrong E2, thank you. Class E2 Atlantic, also built in 1902 at Altoona. A couple of months earlier, on June 12, 1902, the Pennsylvania Railroad had inaugurated its new 18-hour passenger service between New York and Chicago, known as the Pennsylvania Special, which was a forerunner to the railroad's famous Broadway Limited 10 years later in 1912. Sometime after it was built, the 7002 was added to the train as a replacement locomotive in Crestline, Ohio. However, delays east of Mansfield caused the train to be 25 minutes late by the time of its departure, so the engineer had to try and make up for lost time. During its run, the locomotive was said to have reached up to a speed of 127 miles per hour, which would have made the 7002 the fastest steam locomotive in the world. However, to use an old expression, that's a load of hogwash, as we all know which steam engine truly holds that title. Anyway, the 7002 continued to operate for the Pennsylvania Railroad for more than 30 years, which also included being rebuilt into a Class E7S in 1916, until it was eventually scrapped in 1935. However, this decision would come back to haunt the Penzi a few years later. By the 1939 New York World's Fair, the Pennsylvania Railroad soon realized their mistake of scrapping the 7002, so to rectify it, they had the 8069 modified to look as close to the original 7002 as possible, as it already resembled the original engine pretty closely. Well, except for one little detail. That being the actual 7002 had a more traditional round-top firebox, while the 8069 was built with a more square-shaped bell pair firebox. Once this was completed, the new 7002 was placed on display at the New York World's Fair as the world's fastest steam engine. Yeah, right. And again for the Chicago Railroad Fair between 1948 and 1949. Like the 1223, number 7002 spent much of its time in storage in Northumberland, Pennsylvania, until it was donated to the Rare Museum of Pennsylvania in Strasburg in 1979 by the Penzi's successor, Penn Central. Also like the 1223, shortly after, the 7002 was added to the National Register of Historical Places. In 1982, the former Pennsylvania 442 Atlantic was leased to the Strasburg Railroad where it was restored and operated, mostly acting as a stand-in for the railroad's former Canadian National 260 Mogul No. 89, as that engine was undergoing a major rebuild around that time. Now we come to the 1223 and 7002 together, as both locomotives operated a series of double-header excursion trips along the former Pennsylvania Railroad main line two west to Harrisburg in 1985, and one east to Philadelphia in 1986. The two former Penzi engines also took part to help celebrate the 85th anniversary of the Broadway Limited on June 13, 1987. Number 7002 would also head its own excursion out to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania in 1988 for the 125th anniversary of when Abraham Lincoln made his journey over the same route to make his famous Gettysburg Address back in 1863. Both the 1223 and 7002 would make their last runs in late 1989 as around that time, the Strasburg Railroad had received a new ultrasound device and discovered that both locomotive's firebox walls were too thin to operate safely. The railroad declined to make the necessary repairs to keep the two Pennsylvania locomotives running, since they both belonged to the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. Moreover, the museum wanted to keep the original fabric of both engines intact, so both the 1223 and 7002 were taken out of service and put on permanent stag display inside the museum, where they still remain to this very day. It's highly unlikely that either of these engines will ever steam again, but they sure have brought a lot of good memories to those who have seen these two early 20th century machines in action, on the Strasburg and on the former Pennsylvania main line.